be going over the first game we're going to be going over is Kunai Academy. Now, Kunai Academy, if you can't if you can't make a guess what Kunai Academy is about, I'll give you a hint. It's a very popular show. And if you guess Naruto, you're you are correct. It's Naruto. It's just it's just Naruto. That's literally all it is. Like I would love to I would love to say that it's something else, but it's not. It's, it's at least it's not Kani Academy. <laughs> Correct, bearing. It is not that, thankfully. Uh, but it is exactly what you think it is. Now, Kunai Academy actually had a Kickstarter. It's a lot. Yeah, as with most good ideas, you know, Kickstarter decided to step re rear its ugly head on it. And immediately you're kind of looking at this and you would probably be saying, Notepad, Notepad, is this, is, is this a PBTA game? Is this a PBTA game? Because it's made by a guy in fucking Queens. Being like, well, no. However, it would like, it would really like you to believe it is. That's one of the odd things. So this game came out, let me do a quick double check, this game came out, um, about last year, roughly. Actually, when did the Kickstarter itself launch? Beta testing. So this came out, uh, yeah, about last year when the project launched. So, one of the big things about Kunai Academy... It is by a company called Sweaterpunk Games. Now, Sweaterpunk Studios, what, 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 what's, what's their, what's their jam? What's the thing? What do they do? How do they operate? And the answer is they don't. Like it's a, it's run by one guy named Justin Kaler, the main guy here, or Collar, or Kaler, or whatever. Why is, why is the hell the connection on Twitch is absolute trash? There is most likely a big streamer streaming currently. I'm not fucking with you. That is probably the reason. And if you are a small streamer, you get condemned to the sadness place. Uh, hence one of the reasons why I actually want to build up the audience and get partner is that you guys can actually successfully... You you may be you may be bamboozled by this, but you will be able to successfully uh, switch over to lower quality things. Actually, watch because if you don't live in America, fuck you, I guess. <laughs> but hello, Drago. But this is really their only major game, and Beam Swords and Bazookas. I actually tried to find anything on Beam Swords and Bazookas. I couldn't really find anything on them. I know that it exists, and I know that it is definitely a thing. So, actually, oh, fuck it, let's do a... Is there anything that just leave me sweet? Yep, right back there. It was actually a Kickstarter as well. Actually did pretty decent. I mean, it's a fairly... These guys have a good track record. Like, there's nothing really aggressively odd about them now outside of that that's really it they've done two games really and kunai academy kind of fascinated me for one for a few reasons the main one is that i actually like the artwork i'm like okay the artwork's kind of nice and someone actually requested that i take a look at it so uh, as the person that i am i decided to say screw it let's do it let's go Let's go into it and see what we can find out about it. And this is it. <laughs> well, that this is this is what you're getting. This is not an exactly what we'd like to call an extensively like background rich game. You are. It's Naruto. You are playing Naruto. <laughs> that that is what you are doing. And as you can kind of already see, it's fine and it's like oh wow and then you look at it and you're like wait a second no pad that what what's that you're bringing up no pad why are you bringing up playbooks oh no it's a pbta game this is where things get very odd 
I think this is kind of the best way to kind of do it. This game likes to walk. This game likes to talk. This game likes to say a bunch of things. It's not PBTA. It's not. And frankly, I have no idea why these are even in place. The we'll, we'll get to a little bit more about like why this is really odd to me. But the system is, at its core, a dice pool system, actually. You pretty much designate what these are, and they're stacking dice. It goes from D6, D8, D10, D12. That's it. Most of them are going to be in D6, D8, D10 tier. Majority of rolls are going to be one from over here, one from your body, spirit, and mind, and one over here, your martial elements and illusion. The goal, a dice ladder. I, I call them stacking dice. The goal is to get hits, and hits are four up, and then eight up is two hits. That's it. And, yeah, no, that, yeah, actually, I have to double check that. But it's really odd, because you're looking at it and being like, oh, because I, I wrote this off initially. I'm like, it's PBTA. It's another PBTA game. It's going to be another game I've already looked over. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it. And then you look into it, and you're like, what? It's not. Now, one of the things is, all these characters are actually 13, 15 years old. Now, keep that in mind. They're on the, they're crossing the important threshold in their ninjutsu training. Let me emphasize this. Enough. You are not. You, very, when you say it looks like Savage Worlds, you're going to see that a lot when we're going through this game. See, it sounds like something else. Me and uh, another fellow RMP. We actually went through this game, and we were saying that the entire time. It was just like, wow, this really sounds like this, or this sounds like this. However, one thing is that you are going to be playing kids. You are not playing older ninja. You are not playing, you know, Ninja War or anything. No, you are playing 13 to 15 year old Naruto characters. And if you cannot get over that, let me just let me just emphasize this real quick. If you cannot get over the fact that you are playing children. In very anime, very Naruto-esque setting, the game ain't gonna work. It's built entirely around that concept. But I respect that, though. I respect that entirely. And I am cursed with BBTA games. And it's like, alright, okay, alright, what you'll need? You'll need dice, you'll need all the dice, playbooks and or character sheets. Okay, pencils and pens. This is important for enough, for a very interesting mechanic I actually really enjoy. And playing cards. Because that's how initiative is determined. Playing cards. Right. And it's like... Wait, what? You, you look at it, you're like, wait, what? Playing cards? That sounds an, That sounds an awfully like... Savage Worlds. <laughs> it, I told you all. Just keep watching. I'm going to go over some I noticed. Now, cultural touch note. It does say, hey, you know, it's a romanticized. Oh, it's a Japanese thing. It's romanticized. It's about Naruto. It's not written by an Asian person. Let's just say that right goddamn now. It's written by a guy from Queens named Justin. So, character creation... Eight ninja archetypes. Ninja archetypes are your classes. Why? Why, you may ask, are they playbooks? Don't know. There's no reason for them to be playbooks. Choose a village background. Pretty much this is how your setting is determined. And then your ninja details. You assign your attribute points. Choose your trait. And your max energy and strain. This is going to be a play a little bit later, which is a little bit important there. Now, I think it's easier for me to go over this. Now, each of these each of these playbooks, we'll call them for now, have a special ability. You know, the gutsy ninja has the powerful persona. Any verbal attack hits can be used if they were prepare or overcome hits. All right, all right. You have an advantage in preparing and overcoming. And guess what advantage is, kids? It's add a d6. Yes, it's adding a d6. Initiative is cards. Uh, where is that? Terminating success. So yeah, uh, four under, score zero, five to nines, one hit, ten or above, two hits. That was it, yeah. 
that's it. Basic hit system. Which, you look at it and you're like, wait, so it's a dice pool system now. And why do we have playbooks? And then we have advantage and disadvantage. Which is, when a player is granted an advantage, they add an additional six-sided advantage eyes to their roll. And you hit score during the advantage and I add to the total number of hit score for the roll. Disadvantage. You add a d6 disadvantage dies when rolling a disadvantage, the player must disregard the highest result when determining the number of hits scored. This is Shadow of the Demon Lord. God damn it, Barry. Uh, it's Shadow of the Demon Lord. Which, you look at it and you're like, wait a second, why do you have Shadow of the Demon Lord on top of my Savage Worlds, top of my Flowered by the Apocalypse game? It's like, okay, alright, I'm down. Now, the big thing is here, your traits are kind of what define you. So, choose one of your traits. Energetic, tough, signature weapon, charismatic clan member. This is what it is. Now, this is one of those things that gets really fascinating. Now, these are your traits. Like, these are, like, a fairly important part of your character. And we are currently on the genius ninja. Let's uh, scroll down and... The gut gutsy ninja? What? what? Wait a second. Wait a moment. It, it's almost like all the traits are the same except for one. Only one trait is different between every single class. And that's right down here. It's one. And then it's like, okay, okay. After we get, we've picked our trait, that's fine. Right, that's fine. We don't need to worry about that. Let's do our techniques. Our techniques really define what you are. What you have to do is you choose a technique, and then you name it. There you go. That's how techniques work. You change, you pick a technique, and you change it. Now, some techniques you can actually augment with, like this custom technique one, but you only get one trait per level, and there's only four levels. So most likely, you're not going to be getting that many. Custom, you're not. You're only going to get one custom technique. And guess what? All the techniques are the exact same. All of the, you know, forbidden techniques are the exact same. All of the bloodline techniques are the exact same. All of the tech, all of these characters are effectively the same. And they're very similar outside of, again, one single trait right up here. Which... I thought it was very fascinating, and what you do, the most basic idea is, you take your you take your dice, you roll, and you determine how many successes you get. Sometimes you need one success, sometimes you need two successes. Maybe three if you're feeling really spicy. That's it. Real simple game. And I actually enjoy that. Now, this is Edge's. Now, Edge is actually a... Oh, I don't want to this. Edge is a cool mechanic. But as... How do I want to work this properly? I don't want to sound mean. Uh, it is a cool mechanic that is unfortunately kind of rough around the edges. Now, the entire idea with an Edge is that you can generate an Edge. It grants the players the ability to re-roll dice. When an Edge is created... The number of edge levels, one to three, can be expended to re-roll any number of dice on a single roll. When all edges levels have been expended, the edge leaves play. That's it. Now, what is an edge? Is edge like a... Is something that like you have to like physically take, or is it like an ability? No, it's... You create edges by taking an action, gain edges through traits and techniques. What an edge is... Is something like shadow clones to represent characters having some copies of themselves. Or it's a, like, oh, I'm in a ring of fire and you can't hurt me, or something like that. It's a narrative way of telling you that you have an advantage, and you can use those edges to do things. Namely, reroll dice. Which I actually like. I actually think this is a really cool mechanic, because it really gives that really thematic, like, anime feel to things. And that's fun. 
it's fun. You know, created wants to re-roll their own dice, spend an ally to re-roll their dice, can expend edge level to impose re-roll on an enemy. Because enemies roll in this game, which um, that's when I first kind of read that, I'm like, yeah, this isn't PBTA at all. It's just kind of playing by the, the name of it. Now, same dice multiple times, and level, edge, level, edge levels expend resources. It's a little rough around the edges, but effectively, all it is, is you create the situation. You put that situation in the center of the table. And suddenly, everyone kind of changes the fight. It's, I've created all my shadow clones, and now there's a dozen of us around, and uh, everyone's like, well, I'm going to use this to uh, you know, mitigate the fact that I'm going to get my shit rocked. <laughs> like... The very elegant little system that's just kind of stretched out really far, which that's kind of one of the presiding facts of life with this set with this game, is that this can be summarized in about two paragraphs, but it's instead shit. It's uh, one, two, three, four. It's four blocks of text that could kill a man, and you gotta appreciate that. It's like, oh god. It's, that's the odd thing, because it, it, he never says it's PBTA, but it walks the walk, it looks the, you know, it looks the look, and just doesn't do it. It's like, huh, you, this is fascinating, but it's also Shadow of the Demon Lord a little bit, and then you have some Savage Worlds influence, and then you have some PBTA influence. It's, uh, also there's more. At narrative truce hidden from the forest bush. Spotted a weakness. Uh, this game is very clunkily written in some aspects. Like, this could be really easily tightened up, but it just isn't. I don't know if it's just page count requirements or they just feel like it. I don't know. Obstacles are kind of the exact opposite thing. Impenetrable sand armor is an example. Obstacle. I. It's not Kara. It's, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, this is an impediment. Something is going wrong, and you need to overcome it. Literally using the overcome action. That's it. <laughs> Represent how difficult it is to remove. Overcome action. There are gate obstacle levels for each hit scored. It's not real. It actually has a mechanic, like narrative mechanic, which I enjoy. If I have sand armor, I can't really illusion the sand armor away unless I make a damn good reason for it. Or I can't really, or I'm going to punch it and not probably going to break it unless I do something tricky with it. I actually like this system a lot. The edge and obstacle system is actually really clever and really pleasant. It just doesn't really have that much room to breathe in. And I wish it had more room to breathe. So... And again, massive narrative cohesion, narrative cohesion, narrative cohesion. No. Energy is another very clunky mechanic. I... Energy allows you to make your super moves. This is cool. People like this. It allows me to use my techniques, and you only get very few techniques. It allows you to do things. It's like, ah, cool, I'm in, let's do it, I'm ready, and it's an odd mechanic. <laughs> Pretty much the idea is you spend it, and then at the start of your next turn, you get one back. It kind of becomes an action economy system, a little bit clunky. Is this a narrative ge narrativist game? Again, no, but yes. That's the odd thing about Kunai Academy, Draco, is that it wants to, it, it says everything for a narrativist game, but then it provides context for each of them. Oh, well, you get to choose and define your own superpower, you know, ability or whatever. Well, yeah, I'm going to use a coordinated strike. When I use an ability to assist an attack, I add a plus one hit to the roll. Add a plus success. Elemental strike. Make a martial attack and add your elemental arts die to the roll. You can fluff it however you want, but it actually has, like, mechanics behind it. Or even things such as obstacles and disadvantages. Obstacles and disadvantages have these narrative aspects, 
Where it's like, oh, I have, like, oh, he has a ring of fire around him. We can't, cl we can't close the distance on him. So it's like, okay, since this is the case, we need to overcome this obstacle somehow. Well, I'm going to use my um, water jitsu or whatever, I don't know, piss jitsu, to put out, the, you know, try to put out the fire. Well, he's going to try to get it to a high place because it's only around him, so throw down some fucking uh, sh sh shuriken kunai. Kunai. Kunai on a stick. I actually like that. <laughs> It's very odd because it has those it has those mechanics on top of things. It's just these little clunky mechanics that make things really odd. It's the ninja's ability to draw their energy. It's like, all right, you pay the cost, and then the next turn you regain energy, one energy. This is a textbook economy issue. Because the the number of actions you're expelling, then everyone has to have the upkeep phase. I've uh, described this as a few times. In combat, if you have mechanics like these, what occurs is very simple. You have, at the beginning of every turn, you have an upkeep phase. It's an unspoken turn. That unspoken turn, you're going to be like, okay, everyone, upkeep. Everyone gets their one energy back. Everyone gets their one thing back. Everyone gets... Like it's doesn't never takes long, but it's just another step in it. And then someone forgets, and then it's like, well, oh well, hey GM, I have this, you know, I have plus one energy. I forgot to, you know, bring it up next time. It's like, oh, do you? I thought we already went over that, and then it kind of grinds things to a halt. It's I'm not usually a fan of these, but it kinda works here. It kinda doesn't. Now strain. <laughs> This is one of those parts where I don't like very much. Strain represents how much punishment a character has taken over the course of the encounter. Simple enough. It's your health. However, if you ever exceed your strain limit, you're taken out of the fight. Like, all right, all right, all right. However, the character receives strain that would push them past their strain limit. They're knocked out of the encounter. This could mean they fall unconscious, run away, lose the will to fight, or even die. This choice can be made by the player who controls the character, but should always fit the narrative circumstances at hand. This is a really interesting little note. It's effectively saying you can't die. Which I'm not a fan of. One of the things about this little particular thing that I, this particular mechanic I thought was fascinating was that you can't die in this game. And when I was going over things with RMP, we noticed one thing that was always fascinating. Um, I'm going to introduce to you one of my favorite Naruto characters. Uh, just because of how much he presented to the, to the world so early on. Uh, this is Zabuza. Zabuza has a fuck-off sword. That's... That's his thing. The first time the characters really encounter him, guess what he wants to do? He wants to fucking kill them. And the the fight changes. Cuz kind of up to this point there have been people like, "Oh, I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill the main character or something like this." But it's always you know, sneaky and there's always plot stuff going on. Sabuza was like the first like major major fight that was like, "Here are a group of like kids fighting a person in actual combat. No, like, we're going to try to stab, you know, use super techniques or anything. It's situation at hand. There is someone who wants to kill us. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. And I always liked that about him because he changed the fight. He changed everything. It wasn't a, well, we're training now. I'm going to punch you in the face. And oh, no, haha, -ha, Naruto, you're on the ground and you're bleeding, ha ha ha, I win, you're unconscious, let's eat ramen. It became, I have, like, I am going to stab you to death now. Like, if I hit you once with this sword, you're fucked. Uh, in Kunai Academy, that doesn't happen. And there's a fix to this, mind you. There's a fix to this. Using the um, Song of Ice and Fire role-playing game has a system that I think work would work great for this. It's the idea of escalation. 
sometimes you're going to be fighting just for fun. It's the idea of, you know, me punching you and you punching me. Once we kick the shit out of each other, we're both laying on the ground laughing. But you can always escalate the fight. Well, we're now just, we're roughhousing because it's fun. And now we're actually fighting, fighting because we want to hurt each other but not kill one another. Now we want to kill one another. I think having a system like that would be helpful in this game. To kind of get a little bit more consequences for going down. Because right now there isn't really a consequence for downing themselves. The only consequence is lingering emotions. And the lingering emotions thing is really weird. And it's kind of like, oh, well, I almost died, so I feel sad. and But it doesn't really do anything. Now one of those other really weird mechanics. Welcome to Resist. <laughs> now, I want you to think in your headspace real fast. I'm punching you. I'm going to punch you right in the fucking face. I scored my two hits. I'm going to do two damage to you. Now, when you say, when you think resist, it's like, okay, I'm going to resist the rat attack. I'm going to try to reduce the damage a little bit. I'm going to try to do that. Absolutely fucking not. You're smoking hash. You resist taking more damage. Which is, again, one of those moments you look at it, you're like, what are you talking about? You resist taking more damage, and the entire idea is you roll a dice. If you score a hit, you don't take the additional damage. So if I do that two damage hit to you, I you roll to resist taking a third point of damage, which is really clunky and not good. But I understand what they're going for, which is the odd thing. I understand what they're trying to do is... You're putting your arms up as you defend, and you get knocked back instead of taking, like, oh, you're really down. It's like, oh, I was braced for it. Haha. -ha. I'm a Kunai Academy. Rawr. I'm going to punch you. Wham. What the fuck am I even on today? But the issue is that this is a really clunky system. Really fucking clunky. And it's things like, oh, well, you can use teamwork to give resist rolls advantage. And edge lo and then edge levels can be expended to reroll dice on resist checks. Resist, and a character will take two straight instead of one. It's like... They two straight instead of one when they fail to resist. It's, it's one of those things you take a step back. And you, you kind of... It feels like you're... Uh, it, it, you're understanding now. <laughs> you roll to resist taking additional damage. But certain attacks can do additional, additional damage if you fail to resist them. It's a really clunky mechanic. And I understand the idea behind it is you being bracing for attacks. It's you rolling for punches. It's you kind of like doing that last second dodge because strain is kind of more abstract than just meat points. This could probably be doing better if it was something like, hey, man with sword, man with knife, actually, let's see, man with knife is going to stab you. If you fail to resist, you're going to get cut. You're going to take a lot of strain. However, if you succeed, you're only taking a base amount. You're taking a lot less strain because, again, you dodged out of the way of the knife. That man still has a knife, and he's still swinging it at you, and you're going to go down if you get hit, but you're kind of dodging out of the way. That's, I think, what they were going for, but it doesn't play that way. It plays real chunky. Like, maintain composure while being attacked. Very, very odd. And there's also flashback mechanics, because of course there's fucking flashback mechanics. You can flashback whenever. <laughs> Why can you flashback whenever? You just can. Just deal with it. If you want to flashback to when you started having the flashback, that is a thing you can do. It means nothing. It is it is a give me, give me mechanic. It is a mechanic. You say, I'm going to use my flashback and I'm going to get a hit on this. Or, I'm going to use a flashback to overcome an obstacle real fast. Ha ha ha. And it's that teamwork. There's a lot of these little side mechanics that are really odd. Like, 
teamwork makes sense, but it's not really expanded upon. You have this section, like, right here, which feels like it should be longer. Like, edges, like an edge has a longer, more things to actually do than teamwork, which is, I would feel, a fairly important part of this setting. Hello, Barrett. What is the point of that mechanic? I don't know. Like, on that, honestly, Draco, I do not know the point of that mechanic. It's just a really clunky, odd way of putting it in. Is that Comic Fucking Sans? I don't think it's Comic Sans. Okay, we, we gotta check now. You're, 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 you're bothering me now. Comic Sans. Uh, look. We, we gotta go on a magic quest, everyone. We, we, we have to double check if it is... No, that's the wrong one. Go away, China. Pagan, no, I don't... Pagan, no Pat Cinematic Universe. I don't need you. This is older. Uh, where is... Oh, it's a good one. Uh, I don't know what's in here. Let me check it here. So... We are going to... What the fuck is... What in God's name is this document anyway? Okay, we're making it go away. So, let's do Comet. Let's do actually be Healing. Let's bump it up. We'll do 60, and we'll make it Comic Sans. I mean, it's not. I mean, it. It's not. Yeah, it's it's not Comic Sans. What font is that anyway? Give me one second. I know he says what he he gives what the fonts are at the beginning of the book. Let me just check that real fast. It's gonna bother me now. CC Wild Words. That's what it is. <laughs> Wild Words. Legally distinct comic suck fucking sans. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is broken now. I break everything. Everything is broken now. Oh god. Live stream fails. Notepad Anon fails helplessly at trying desperately to fix his fucking setup because he's a dumbass and makes dumb mistakes every now and again. So, okay, we want this. We want this to expand out over here. We want this to put it right here. OBS, please give me a little bit more room. And like that. Perfect. So, yeah, flashbacks, teamwork, odd, odd mechanics. I don't understand entirely the reason why they are present. It's very odd in that regard. Now, this is experience. The experience system is also completely fucking stupid. Like, this is just like an, an objective experience, like just an objective opinion. If that. It's gonna bother me the entire time. I hope you all know that. Something is broken. Ah! I had such a beautiful setup, and now it's, everything is ruined. But, now, the entire idea, this is where that narrative aspect comes in. The entire idea is that you gain experience, not necessarily through combat, but through experience scenes. It's an act out of the moment that is important to their character's growth. Once you accumulate four experiences, you gain a new ninja rank. However, these experiences can be desire experiences, responsibility experiences. They're scenes that you just kind of, kind of go over 
and it's a really odd way of doing it. Cate it's you've you've categorized in one of the two, and then your ninja ranks, which again you need four. That's it. You need four. However, when you do that, but it, it, technically, since there's only four ranks of ninja ninja ness, you have you need four to get the rank two, four to get the rank three. And four to get the rank four. You only have 12 technically of those scenes per character. So you need to space them out if you want to run any like length of campaign, really. If you want to do like a five, six session campaign, you may be able to get to, like a ninja rank two. If it's one of those really odd mechanics that like you look at it and you understand what they're going for, but it's just weird because when you rank up, you get a new. You get a new trait, a new technique, you get increase an attribute, you increase your energy, increase your strain. That's it. You actually get a lot of stuff from it, because it allows you to use these mechanics better. You get more traits, you get more things, and you look at it and you're like, what am I smoking? Something is wrong, something doesn't seem right, and... It's one of those very bizarre, like, some, like, who, why are you the way that you are? And scene checks are dull. Scene checks are bad. Because the entire idea of a scene check is that it's not really a check check. Because everything else has to be based around combat in some way. But scene checks are just roll a dice and see if you succeed. Now we have all our actions. It works. I wish they expanded these out, actually. Because you have martial attacks, elemental attacks, illusion attacks, verbal attacks. And that's it. These are your actions. Like, you have a very simple set of actions. And a very simple set of ideas. But you don't really need more. And I'm kind of okay with it. Also, here's the... I, I will go over... I want you to take a look at this one. This is our Naruto XP, remember? And we're going to like our Naruto XP. Do you like your Do you like your Naruto? Do, do we have Naruto at home? Now... <laughs> let me just scroll through all the fucking not playbooks. And then all the village backgrounds. This is, like, effectively your... Village story. It's like, alright. This is the same character. Now, I need to talk about the art real fast. I'm not the one to usually judge art. I'm, I'm not the one to judge artwork at all. Because I have no sense of artistic sense, but... Kunai Academy has a really weird kind of back and forth on some of its artwork. Sometimes the characters look a lot older than they should. Sometimes they look like 2012 indie RPG characters, case in, case in point. But it's like overall, I actually kind of like the designs mostly. Like they are definitely inspired and you definitely know where, who they're supposed to kind of represent. But I like them. And I wish there was more. Honestly, I do wish there was more. Let me just uh, go through all the fucking thing. Also, uh, he here's um, here's I'm gonna steal your fucking girl. Cause he's rock hard. Don't worry about it. Standard techniques. Kind of already went over things. It's they make you sound like you can do stuff like this. Like, oh wow, this is a perfectly valid character. Not really. You are playing still to this. You're still kind of bound by these techniques and these, you know, bloodlines and forbidden stuff. You are at your core still bound by that. But I want what I would want is there to be more. I want there to be more options for me to design my particular character. And I still have no idea how the hell this outfit actually works. But again, I, I, I like it. It's nice. I mean, it's thematic. 
but yeah, this is a. I'm rock hard and coming to the fuck your girl, I guess. Because the second I saw this man, I was in. I'm like, I want to play this guy. He looks hilarious. <laughs> but that's kind of Kunai Academy at its core. Like, you get some interesting ideas throughout, but you also have aspects like this sword means nothing. Mechanically speaking, this sword has no bearing on anything you're doing. It's the same as punching someone. His hair still makes sense somehow in his non-Euclidean braids. The plant magic does nothing. It's just uh, words on paper. Which could be fine. If that's your jam, cool. Like Some people really enjoy that kind of lighter idea other people don't these are all pretty standard you know gm gm notes and such like this isn't really this is kind of the the ending part that everyone has to have however what are my thoughts on kunai academy like what's my what's my final my final big think on this game i actually like kunai academy I will be brutally, brutally honest. I actually really enjoy this game. And I enjoy this game because it actually does a lot of cool stuff. And I would want to see it done more. Like, that is, like, my objective opinion. I like the thing. I want more of it. But... <laughs> For every good idea, there always feels like it's a notch somewhere on it that kind of roughs it up. And it's like, yeah, I like the like the idea behind the resist mechanic. It's a good idea being like, oh, well, I'm resisting attacks. Kind of like, oh, I'm my determination to fight, but it also means nothing. And it's handled really poorly. Flashbacks, completely thematic, makes a lot of sense can be used whenever the hell I feel like and doesn't really have that impact. You have the, like, oh, here are all these cool techniques that I can use. But the techniques are not really personal and I feel like everyone else has them at the same time. I want more. That's the only thing. I want more stuff. I want more techniques. I want more bloodlines. I want more superpowers. I want things to feel more defined. I want things to feel a little bit crunchier. I want to see what older ninjas look like. I want to see what, you know, my encounter with enemies may appear to be. I want that threat of early, of late early Naruto, not Shippuden. Shippuden kind of went off the rails a little bit. But that kind of that feeling of like, ah, oh, well, we're serious, but we're also kind of dealing with our own issues, and we're still kids, and we're still that. I want more of that. I want more options. I want more ideas. Honestly, you don't need the playbooks. That is one of the odd things about this game, is that this playbooks, these mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because you want to know what you can do? You give a list of special abilities, have them pick one. That's what you do. You put in a little note right here and say special ability, you write it in. And you can do a lot more rather than being like, oh, you're the gutsy ninja, so you have to have this. You can play with things. Hey, you have a special ability, like, um, let me see. Like, yeah, alter ninja. You're like, oh, well, you can, you know, choose any forbidden or bloodline techniques when you gain a technique. We'll play with that. Hey, I can't or have a Rock Lee character being like, you have no traits. You have no techniques, but you get like two additional traits because you're Rock fucking Lee. I want those. I want more options. And I want things to expand out more. I think this, this game had a bit more expansion to it, a bit more meat in some aspects. I, I would say this is going to be one of the, this would this would be a fantastic game. I think it would fit perfectly for a lot of things, and I love it.
but it doesn't do that. So it's kind of one of those, like, look at it, be impressed by it, but understand that it's not flawless. Which brings me to my second game. And that second game is... Yokai Hunter Society! Yokai Hunter Society! Ooh, wow, look, it's so pretty, right? Wow, it's so pretty, so nice. So, who did Yokai Hunter Society? So, if we go to Yokai Hunter Society, is we have my Punkador. 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 This person. And generally, this is one of those games where I can't really find much else on it. You can get the the pamphlet version, like right here. This is a pamphlet that you can buy, actually download whenever you feel like, and play the game with. Exactly what it says. It's right there, all for you. Just download it. Do it now. Because the game isn't actually that thick. However, it was created for, uh, based on Tunnel Goons, but Goon Jam. It's Goon Jam. Creative Tunnel Goons. What's Tunnel Goons? Never heard of Tunnel Goons. Simple tabletop role-playing. Lightweight 2D6 system. Oh, no. You wouldn't be making just another game. Uh, let's, uh, let's go on a magic adventure. Is this what I think it is? Did he just, like, do a one-for-one -one copy of it? Nope, just take me to the downloads. Uh, it's 231 kilobytes, so you know it has to be good. Alright, Highland Paranormal, oh. Oh, no. Wait a second, you wouldn't be... This is barely a game, this is... Oh lord, oh lord. Okay, that's really light. For better or for worse. But it's based off that, actually, for Goon Jam. Now... The only... Actually, I should say... The only other game this person has actually done, Punkador... Uh, where are you? By you all by Kima is Hunkador, which is a fantasy zine. Experiment Blake self-promotion strategy. 20-page zine. Illustration, orphan comic pages, and a modern neural network built by Adam King. It's not even really a game. <laughs> he doesn't really have anything else. Uh, I've looked around. Yeah. Also, Varric did provide the copy. Thank you, Varric. Shine on, Crazy Diamond. Yeah, Tunnel Goons is very light. It's like, yeah. So, what is Yokai Hunter Society? Well, Yokai Hunter Society is a game of about monster hunting in monster hunters in Meiji era Japan. Now, I want you to remember this, Meiji era Japan. Now, Meiji era was roughly, uh, roughly about 1868 to about 1889. This is, that, this is at the, the tail end, we'll call it, of the Meiji Restoration, which is a pretty big idea about some of the shit in this game. Now, another one fun thing. Now, I'm not the kind of person who's like, okay, you gotta... You gotta really have all those... You gotta have, you know, representation. You kinda gotta know. My thing is, you should at least respect to what you know. Respect what you have. Don't have a Wikipedia article open. Because if you notice something real fast, there's no one who's actually Japanese here. Uh, not really at all. Now, 
this doesn't really play like a big thing until a little bit later on. However, <laughs> at its core, this game is a 2D6 system. That is what you're going to be doing. Well, 2D8 and a bunch of other, mostly D6s though, you'll be using. It's a 2D6 system. That's it. <laughs> Don't, do not think it's anything other than that. Meiji? What's the, what's the correct pronunciation? I don't know fucking Japanese. Uh, Meiji? Yeah, Meiji. I always put the A at the end. Meiji. But during this time, it was very actually interesting. But, you know, it's like, oh, bonus points, geared toward a psychological horror of many Japanese films and comics, not your style. Historical fidelity to Meiji era, Meiji Japan is similarly a matter of preference. You make yokai in the society unknown to most of the population, or yokai are plague about to change the course of history. I'll give you a hint. It is not Meiji era. Yeah, it's not Meiji era Japan. It's not. Do not think it is Meiji era Japan. You are silly if you think that. So, 46 per column. Or just choose. If you feel like. If it comes in, if it comes in to play, you roll an additional d6. That is it. You get four points to distribute among all your four attributes: courage, self-control, sharpness, and wisdom. Congratulations. You, you've done it. Really simple. <laughs> not exactly a, not exactly a complex game. I do enjoy some aspects of it, and it's like, oh, well, you can uh, equipment eight small, medium-sized objects. You can assist in a task with a roll. I hate this system. I fucking despise this system, though. It's to extend the bonus of rolling wisdom when you acquire or create the item. This wisdom roll represents how sharp a buyer, skilled craftsman, and trained user you are. Ten or less, the bonus is simply one. For every point above ten, you get an additional bonus. For a twelve, you get a plus three. Uh... Why don't I like that? Why do not I do not like this idea? One, it because it makes all the equipment kind of fucking random. You are not going to find something that is like objectively good or objectively bad if you have low wisdom. However, it also here's the thing, it also doesn't say that you can't give things away, it just determines the quality of it right away. What you can do though, is have someone who is just jacks up wisdom. And hands everyone really good items that they just find. It might be thematic, but it's just really weird to handle. And it's like, you. this could have been a little bit more elegant. I'm going to say, it could be more elegant. I understand the intent, I don't like the execution. And every time you successfully complete a mission, you see two points. Increase your path, increase your maximum HP. 5, 4, 3, 2 for your paths. Maximum HP is 15. All right, pretty good. I do like it. I like this. I, I like this idea. Reflect further development through additional lines in your character's background. But background also does have mechanical impact. So you kind of want to write good parts about yourself in there, but it's like, hey, I overcome. Like, oh, I fist fought an Oni. All right, or it's even down to like, oh, I negotiated with a Kenku. That's cool. I like that idea. It actually gives it. It feels nice, but without ever like really interfering with anything. I'm like, oh, that's that's a nice idea to it. Um, fun fact: it's also impossible to be 49 in this game or anything odd. You just can't be an odd number. Just don't think about it. Now, this is where things start getting a little bit odd, because it's like, okay, a revolver, and that makes sense, a matchlock pistol, okay, okay. A snack, frugal meal, beer, sake, lodging, kyoten, oil lamp, rope, box of matches, loaded dice, alright, this makes pretty simple. Car. Fun fact. I'll give you a... This is one of those aspects for 5,000 yen, by the way. And yen were... I actually had to double check with this. The pricing is odd. 
because the yen value at this time was at a kind of a weird state because it's like yen value like 18 7 like 1870 it was like it it's kind of hard to kind of get like a good idea of like how valuable these coins were at the time. So I think what they did was they just made like a very simple, very simple system. However, when what, let's see, when was the first car, uh, uh, in, when was the first car in Japan? 1907. It's... You have a few odd bits where it's like... There weren't cars back then. You didn't get a car. You got them in the early 1900s in any, like, consistent amount. And it doesn't seem like, oh, well, you know, Pat, you're just being a little bit dramatic about it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I know, it's complicated to convert old money into actual money. But it's one of these things where if you want to sell the setting, if you want to sell the idea... You gotta sell it. And if you go in here thinking you're gonna get a Japanese game, you're not gonna get a fucking Japanese game. You're getting a Japanese movie. Sometimes that works, but it's gonna be a Japanese movie as directed by Michael Bay. It's... The fact that it's a car, and it's like... that. I remember that took, that took me immediately out of the game. Just like... Right out of there. And it's like, yep, this was written by uh, people who don't care. That's not the point. And yeah, you got all the guns and stuff, but it was kind of one of those immediately like, mm. you also notice that weapons have literally no per like See, that was that was the odd thing. The Me the Meiji era was ending and it was ended formally, kind of, when cars were introduced. And it doesn't specify this specific time, but it's saying that it's during that time, during the upheavals, kind of, it would be probably after the reforms. So it's kind of one of those moments of, like, you have this aspect here that kind of makes things a little bit more complicated, and it's like, Oh no, like this isn't like, oh, oh goodness, but yeah, it does have, if you roll a nine, you succeed but suffer a consequence because nine is a bad, num bad luck number. It's like, all right, yeah, self-control, wisdom, very simple, not exactly a complex game, but that's not the point for it to be complex, the point is that you are you are again doing these very simplistic ideas with very simplistic concepts to fight that is what this game is about and yeah you know perceived barbarians where was it the year is 1889 like it does say like very clearly right here 1889 about about almost 20, about 15 years before like the first car was introduced and it was like it's kind of at that moment I'm like oh oh boy <laughs> what was the other one that I thought was very was pretty fucking hilarious that I'm like yep this was definitely written by Americans and not anyone fucking else uh some blame barbarians uh, uh Baku times you even dare to hold his majesty responsible uh 
Again, they do have the, like, oh, yeah, yokai. Monsters generally hide their true nature until they're ready to act. Most people dismiss them as superstitions that dwell in the world of fairy tales. About centuries, gathering brave souls from, yeah, all right, yokai hunter society. We're good, we're good. Yeah, sorry, we're hot, we're, we're hotline Tokyo. Yeah, and, uh, this is my favorite. <laughs> they keep citing Sun Tzu. <laughs> yeah, it's like, all right. Yeah, they just do a base 100 conversion, and they, they try to make it out, be like, yeah, it's fine. Since the adoption of the gold sand is 73, exchange rate remains steady at about... US 50 cents. So if you go under this, it costs $2,500 to buy a car. So I'm like, that's a lot of fucking money, but for the era at least, it's like, all right. But again, guns don't do anything. They don't matter. They don't really have any defined aspect of them. That was kind of one of the bigger issues, like one of the issues I have with the game. A bolt action rifle does the exact same thing as a Tonto Blade. You, as a game master, have to be narratively upfront with how you are choosing to do things. Hello, phone. Like, you have to be very, like, narratively upfront. Like, a single-action revolver is going to be the exact fucking thing as a bolt-action rifle. Unless you start factoring in, like, oh, it's 100 meters away. Or, oh, it's only uh, 50 meters away, so it's obviously that. It's like... Really? Really. <laughs> some people are going to like that. Some people aren't. I'm not a huge fan of that. If you're going to make something tight like this. Like the thing is. If you want to make something tight. You need to have those tight mechanics. And it kind of doesn't have that. That's why I kind of. Like the first time I read through this. I didn't even know it was part of that original. The Goon, goon Squad or whatever. I thought it was based off Morkborg more than anything. To be honest. And religion, sacred items. Now, this is my favorite, my favorite line. The Meiji government, however, tried to reinforce the natural religion. An animist-type creed called Shinto. Uh, mythical legitimacy of the emperor. Shinto was adopted as a national faith. Uh, and Christianity became legal. That is pretty much the extent of what you're going to get on Shintoism. You know, the entire reason why yokai are technically around... Shintoism is a side note, and it's just an animus-type creed. It's like, oh, no! <laughs> like, kind of ignoring Shintoism kind of hurts yokai in general, because yokai are really tied to the faith. It's like, oh, God, all right, that's, that's fine. Something you just kind of got to admit. Like, you just kind of got to take on the face. And it's like, yep, that's fine. More Sun Tzu. Then know how to run the game. Now, we also get the... We also started getting more about Japanese stuff. Because, you know, Jap Japan, you know, is where this game takes place. Don't forget. NPC creation. Now, this is the enemies. Now, this is why, like, I like the artwork of this game. I just wish there was there was more, and they actually meant something. Yeah, it's a real odd note about it. If you want to do something like this, you, again, you got to commit. Like, I didn't really go, like, deep into, like, Catholic mythos for fucking, um, Edusius Lux. I didn't do that because it wasn't the point. The point was to use it as set dressing. I even addressed it, like, first thing first in the fucking preface being, like, it's a meme. That's the joke. But it's like, oh, yeah, no, Shintoism, it's just an animist-type religion. Being like, that's a real weird way of looking at things. Really dismissive. And some of the enemies are like, oh boy, look, it's level zero, literally nothing. Like, these have no actual, like, combat ability, really, because your level determines how hard it is to hit you, and also your health. You have 1d3 per level of HP, 
until the HP mats difficulty store number. Level 3 Yokai will have three between 13 and 19 HP. They will score of 13. Which is really fucked. I get what they're going for, being like, oh, it's easier to hit you if you get hit, if you deal damage to them. Ten example of Yokai. Source of inspiration, and pretty box. Like, there's some odd ones in here that I like. The Oni looks like he's about to fucking, like, destroy someone. Yeah, exactly. That was a meme, though. This one isn't. That's that's kind of the issue. Like, what... My thing is, like, what is this one supposed to do? Like, are... Are you really thinking this through? Being like, oh, well, you gotta hunt yokai. Amazake Baba's... Like, that... Like, okay, that's a that's a thing. Or a Nekomata. I'm like, okay, that's... Okay, this is fine. Also, my favorite. Uh, welcome to the Tatsu. Oh, Tatsu. Uh... I love these ones, <laughs> because this dragon looks like he forgot, like, he left the fucking... This dragon looks less like a threatening aura of d destruction and majesty, and more like he forgot to turn the fucking oven on. No, it, it's that moment where he's... You know, it, it's like you're, you know, you're at middle of work, and you're looking at it being like, did... Did I... Did I keep put, actually put on the, you know, the, the roast? In my crock pot. Did I actually do that? Fuck, I didn't. Or it's like, oh, did, did I? Did I leave the oven on? That's what this fucking dragon looks like. <laughs> just, like just the look of vague concern. <laughs> but he's actually like one of the stronger ones. And this is. Here are your special abilities. They don't do anything mechanically. They just you just say what they do. Oh wow, look, it's 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 a yokai. She can stretch her neck. Chop her in half, I guess. Very simple game. Do I like Yokai Hunter Society? Not really. I, I like the idea of Yokai Hunter Society. I like the concept of Yokai Hunter Society. I don't like the execution of it though. I feel the execution of it is weak and doesn't have the necessary impact it wants to have. It's free. Like don't like don't get me wrong, the game is free, but it's like I want if you're going to have me play a game, I want to feel dedicated to it. And actually and the voting at the end, probably at the end of this will actually have one. It is it is freemium, but it's like Do I want, like, would I recommend people, like, go out and buy Yokai Hunter Society now? Because if, if you're passionate about that era, and you want some more stuff happening in that era, you want the look, or you want that, you're not, you're gonna get that. If you want the art, then yeah, I would say that, like, if you want the art, do you want the little dragon, do you want this? It kind of falls on the Morkborg scale of things. I think that's what a part of me is saying that's what it originally was and they just kind of put the the Meiji era on top of it rather than it being a a, a strict setting. I actually have a a, a game that's going to be on the list after this which is going to be called Oji-san Demon Slayer Corporation which has this kind of vaguely similar idea but it was mostly about corporate culture. That the joke that would be the joke. It's not even weeby. Like that's the issue. If this was a weeby setting, then things would be way bigger, way more over the top, way more colorful. Like this is, I would feel Kimetsu Yaba setting. Yeah. Like the issue with this one. Is that it feels like the guy watched, you know, Demon Slayer and was like, guys, I've come up with the most brilliant idea. Guys, we can do this. And then he wrote, he made this 
rather than like doing his like the research behind things to really get across like it's time it's like you could on but it's like one of those things like i wouldn't use even really use yokai hunter society you, you, you kind of say that draco but it's like i think that had like a significant portion of it i think that was a a consideration that was held and again i like the artwork if you, you told me like this is just a piece of artwork cool i'm in i like the fact that like they look like this like the artist definitely knows and this is the guy who wrote the rules he's an artist and like i like this aspect of things it, this looks neat this has like a cool aesthetic to it and it's not like it's a good fucking aesthetic it's just doesn't back itself up very well. And I think that's it's like my ultimate big issue with it. It doesn't back itself. A whole lot of looks, not a lot of substance. Talking about not a lot of looks and a lot not a lot of substance. We're going to be looking at something a little bit odd right now. Uh I want to talk about Mosaic Strict. Now, what is Mosaic Strict? Well, this is a new thing. This, this popped up a few months ago, and people have been kind of like, Hey, no, Pat, I want you to, to note about this. Mosaic Strict, you know, Experimental RPG Design Principle. I'm defining this as a principle because I'm curious what kind of games result by from applying it. I'm very careful. We live in a fallen world, and shared understanding is fleeting. No, Mosaic Strict. Mosaic is a set of criteria that can be true. That might be true of an. That might be true. I fucking hate this already. Of an RPG tag. I looked through this once. Like, it's a vague look. We're going to go through it together. And you. We don't get to have fun. To, we, we're going to not have fun together. So, modular, optional, short, attested, independent, coreless. Texas Mosaic Strict. Another criteria, it is not mosaic strict. There are no partial points, it's all or nothing. Modular. Used together with other RPG texts. Each text only describes a portion of the rules that will probably be used. Be in use. One might describe an initiative system, other how combat works, another how gutter mage ritual works. Well, there's your first problem. <laughs> well, there's your... Uh, there's your there's your first issue, my friend. Now, the idea, what they're going for here, is that you can write a section of rules, a section of ideas, and apply it to every other system. It is a modular, optional thing. You can apply it and say, there you go. This is it. This is the mech combat rules. This is the, you know, where was that one? Like, I have an example, Mosaic Strict. Okay, yeah. This is the example mosaic strict I, I found. This is Mecha Duel. You know, his mosaic strict document for duels. We're for non mechs too. Cool. And like, alright. And four to six sided dice and eight sided die. Well, that immediately takes out a lot of options. Like it <laughs> Mosaic Strict has an issue. And that issue is that it means nothing. Therefore, every piece of rules mean nothing. And like, oh, oh no. <laughs> so, let's see. Optional. Optional, you don't have to use them. Don't want to use them. Two-page spread. No more than 1,500 words. Two-page spread right here. Hello, Thunder. Attested. Uh, the game text doesn't explicitly say that uh, Mosaic Strict. It isn't. Mosaic Strict. There they are, Mosaic Strict. Game designers, if there are any, have a slim chance of finding one another if their work is labeled. It might be confused readers. It's optional why it refuses to use the term saving throw for no good reason. Uh, it makes the acronym work. Oh, no. Independent. Does not refer to mechanics or quantified state of another of any other game text. 
Well, uh, I meant procedures. Coreless assumes nothing is beyond free form play. Is nothing is in use beyond free form play. Well, that that violates most everything because uh, we already have. Guess what? We have mechanics in this one. Just guess fucking what? You know, this is gatekeeping bullshit. Two hundred word RPG contest. Conversion of this convinced me that it's powerful to do almost what I'm describing, still going back into much more traditional game design. I really want to be clear about what I'm talking about. That's stupid. Is it really mistake strict actual play? We can see what the fuck you're talking about. Now, who is this man? This man is this person. I, I actually don't really know who the fuck he is. Like, he does these. Like, a lot of these. Like, oh, here's the wilderness paths. And... Yeah, there's my Gmail, by the way. Like, more Mosaic Strict sets. Okay. Bunch more rules have appeared. Mosaic Strict rule set spreadsheet today. 20 more module rule sets. Okay. I don't like where this is going. Coulters and Kith. Okay, so means nothing. Cool. Uh, spin the bottle. Let me guess. Is it spin the fucking bottle? Wow, everyone. It's spin the fucking bottle. For two dollars? But why? Why, though? Why is it three dollars? The coolest combat system. Universal combat system. No, he's not trolling. That's... Uh, 45 minutes for a game jam episode. Then it's not... It's a cool thing. No, why? Why would you do that? Like, this isn't... Well, that arm, like, this is immediately useless to 95% of games. Big technical project, a flexible resolution, strict diceless resolution. Oh, that's a good sign, fucking... PBTA, okay. Who are you? Michael Prescott. Hello, Mr. Prescott. Who are you? Let's see. Michael Prescott, TTRPG. Ryan Lama, hello! We found you on Twitter. That's what I like to see. Any award one two page dungeon. Oh, that's. You want an any, any, so you automatically think you actually have any. Uh, No. No, Pat, no. No, Pat, no. We can't we can't be going over here already. No. No. Turn away. Turn away, no Pat. It can't hurt you. Okay. Like here's the odd thing about Mosaic Strict. And this is why the reason uh I am diametrically opposed to this concept. My entire uh my entire thing is the exact opposite of Mosaic Strict. Sprug means single-purpose role-playing unitary game system. Sprugs. A Sprug game, at its core, is a game built around doing a thing. Every single thing you do in, in your very own Sprug is for that game. Nothing is exterior to it. And that's one of my big things. Like, I've kind of violated my own rules by making the lexicon in a few ideas, but the lexicon is to me for me to reference some things. Because they're my games. They're my role-playing unitary games. 
Mosaic Strict, the concept behind it of RPG design is very simple. I'm going to take some rules with no system, no mechanics, no idea really behind them, and then splat them on something else. Usually with no, with the uh, grace of a fucking brick through a glass window. Now, with the grace of a b brick through a window, you get things like this, Mecha Duel. Hello. <laughs> There's a distinct chance we will go offline. Not on a lie. So, all of this, like this to me, already kind of violates your rules because we have to be modular. It's what, what's the full modular, optional, short, attested, independent, coreless. This isn't independent. You automatically, by writing half of this stuff, you've already kind of set set in motion that this is tied to something. Because every single thing you write, every single thing you do, ties itself to your system. This is one of the reasons why I kind of indirectly gave this one a uh, designer talk. Mosaic Strict is not a system. It is nothing. It is a method for people to grab their dicks and, fel and fellatiate themselves. That is literally all this is. Look, ma'am, I'm a game designer. <laughs> Look, I wrote with the paper five dollars, please. No, this the, the mosaic streak means fucking nothing. And I don't think he's a troll. I don't think he is anything like that. I legitimately think he. I think one of the best ways to kind of uh, understand this is he is caught up in his own design. And this is why I I love doing this. There's a reason I like to talk to people about game design. There's a reason I like conversing with people who may give no fucking shit about game design, but like playing games. Or even people who don't play tabletop RPGs. I like discussing my design with them. Because they provide different aspects. They provide their own opinion on something. Somewhat, you may describe a mechanic, and that person may be like, that is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. That is the stupidest, ass asinine mechanic I have ever had the displeasure of hearing. Why did you put it in? And it's like, you know what? Why did I put this in? And you think about it, be like, well, it's this, this, and this. And it's like, oh, all right. Mosaic Strict is kind of the opposite of that. You can't judge a Mosaic Strict product. That's one of the jokes about it. It's impossible to judge it because there's nothing actually there. It being a, you know, it being a modular, optional, independent, coreless system, effectively means that if you ever try to judge it, being like this is just bad, like there's no purpose for it, you say, well, it's optional. It doesn't matter. Well, it's modular. You don't need it. Well, it's uh, it's it's independent. I mean, nothing matters with it. It's coreless. Nothing. There's no point to it. But the second you assign a dice to it, there is core. Hell, even Mecha Duel. Even this disaster area. There's a system there. Not a good one. Uh, it's too light. Too light to be good. But it's present. And what are you gonna do? It's like, why bother having this? Like, where are you going to need this? Because immediately, if fucking immediately, you were assuming multiple things. One, you're assuming that we're using dice. There's a couple games that don't use dice. Dice listed game design's cool. Card based card the game design cool. Yeah, we're assuming we're using mechs already, or at least a method to deal with enemies that are not that are, you know, what if we don't have a combat game? I can't put that on there. You're like, oh well, you don't have to. Being like, but it violates the fucking rules. Then it's coreless. I can put it on any game I feel like. You can't. There's no reason to. I can't put this game on Golden Skies. I can't put fucking Mecha Duel on Golden Sky Stories. So it violates that kind of concept already. What this is, is for people who play very few games and claim to play many others. That is what this is for. It's just... dull. But... 
Again, it is supposed to feel good about yourself. Ah, oh, it's very... Oh, not all designs are easy or practical to implement this way. Um, all programs should be simple and focus on doing one thing. Going to add amount of player overhead, lack of better term. And if every sub subsystem implements their mechanics or, di or different or different resolution methods, the resulting system wouldn't be harder to learn than a simple holistic system. This isn't a game. This isn't a de design philosophy. This is someone masturbating. This is all this is. It's a masturbation on paper. <laughs> and it's very tiring. So let's move on to, another, to our next game. A game that's going to be... It's going to be fun, right? It's, it's, it, look at it. It's funny. It's beards. Do you like it? It's funny. Why aren't you laughing? Why, why aren't you laughing? I mean, come come on, look. It, it had a Kickstarter that made money for human beings. And that's where the website leads. Why does the website lead here? Like, uh, beard, uh, beardrpg.com immediately li li links back to this. And this is content by you. Over two, over two weeks, we'll craft locations, items, and NPCs. Oh boy, look, it's, it's, it's beards. So, who are these guys? This is the weird thing where things get a little bit complicated. This is plus one EXP. This is them. It's like, all right, let's check out their games. What games do you have? It is yeah, the Beards and Beyond Zine. This is their thing. You have the style stencils, the, the world map, and the enamel, the enamel pin. They have one game. This is not a game. Like, they have, they have, what they're. What do they do? What What's their main thing? Well, of course, it's D and D themed beard bombs. I'm not fucking with you either. Like, this is literally what they. they that's what it is. It's beard bombs. They also have a show, apparently. But oh, that that's not a okay. Let's let's check out their YouTube real fast. Uh, welcome to Plus One EXP. Let me check what's the YouTube channel look like. Uh, looks like they <laughs> they haven't updated in a while. Okay, they're on Kofi X and Coffee actually. Hell, I don't really give a shit. Be gone. But, uh, let's see, Prestige Classes, Ma Mork, they're playing Mork, Borg, Gun, and Slinger, Vibe Check, Reminders. Looks like they got a few ideas, but, like, nothing really is jumping at, nothing is really jumping out at me. So, let's see. Yeah, so it looks like they have a Kofi. Coffee? Coffee, Cotty. Cooney. But yeah, this is like a this is a company. Like that they have no shows really. They they stream on Twitch. It's like Okay, so they made this Zine during Zine I think this was during Zine Quest too, which is unfortunate. About the Whiskerverse. Now what is this game though, what is it? What is the, the the pitch? What's the funny? What's the thing? The thing is that it's beards. That's it. It's beards. Do, are you laughing yet? Every single thing is related to your beard in some way. You pick your bearded business background, your raiment and rugged relic, your stubbly skills and fleeced flaw, shaggy stats, and a pillow's portrait. All your stats are based off beards. You can use the beard force as well. <laughs> it is exactly what you think it is. It's a very narrative system, very rules light. 
And the entire idea is you use a bunch of D6s to roll. Usually it's 2D6. That's usually what you're rolling. You roll some things and you, you do stuff. Not telling, I can't really tell you what to do in this game because they don't tell you really what to do. You go on quests and do adventures for quests and adventure purposes. Do you give get money? No, because money isn't really a thing. Do you get equipment? Maybe. You're, you are beard bros, I guess, who are be the beard force. This is what you do. You're, you define what you are. However, there's no limits to what you can be. It doesn't really matter. Some of the example characters are things like Beardbot. There's like literally just some asshole who works at a microbrewery. Otherwise known as people who work at microbreweries. And this is coming from someone who likes drinking. Also, guess what, everyone? It's just a random... Just just, just pick whatever you fucking feel like. Doesn't fucking matter. Hippity <laughs> hop, but he doesn't matter. We live in narrative town. You don't get to have fun. Stubbly skills and feelies flaw. This is entirely based on your BBB, which is your class, which can be anything you feel like, and you just discern random skills. If you haven't... If you haven't quite of, uh, got this already, I'm not a fan of this game. Because it's boring. I'm being I'm gonna I'm gonna be very blunt with it. This game is really dull. And it's like, look, it's length, thickness, style, growth, ho ho ho, look, it's beards. It's it's beard. You start of a coif champion. Why aren't you laughing? You should be laughing now. It's beards and it's funny, and it's not. It's not. Just it's like draw a character, I guess, and it doesn't matter. That's the problem with this game at my core is like, it's boring. Because ever since everything is so overly narrative and it kind of relies on fucking action clocks from Forge in the Dark, since it's relying on action clocks from Forge in the Dark, it kind of makes it out to be that narrative. Ha, ah, look everyone. Look, your brewmaster crew barrel teeter and you decide you want to use barrel roll. Hello. You know, barrel roll to go over the side of a waterfall. All right, all right, you're using the... Roll 1d6 and then the bonus your corresponding stat to your roll. Wow! Look at it. You, you just got the success and failure. Look at you tell you how you fail and fuck up. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you can use whatever you feel like. Use whatever stat, use whatever attribute, use whatever, anything you feel like. Just gotta confirm it, I guess. Like a mainframe, shoot a laser pistol or smooth talk a guard, unless we're really into barrels. Yeah. And th it kind of falls into the sin of what happens to many games that let you kind of pick your own skills. Is you're going to end up with people who are going to, uh, well, do their own skill things. I'm combat man, but combat man. I'm going, I'm going to just jack up my skills. So anytime you're in a fight, you're immediately going to have someone who's going to apply all their skills. Or you're going to have Omni Man who has Omni powers and could do anything he fucking feels like. Or they're going to be so broad, so overall encompassing that it means nothing. So it's like, is running and jumping a, a fucking stubbly skill? Well, yes, but no. You shouldn't have those ones because they're too specific. But that's what people are going to default to. I think they want quirky characters. The problem is quirky characters are. It's not fun to make a quirky character. Well, actually, here, let me let me reword that. It's fun to make a quirky character. It's not fun to be forced to make a quirky character. Fight man, fight fight man, a fight man town. It does not exist in this game. You roll and you just arbitrarily succeed or you arbitrarily fail based on whatever the fuck you feel like. That's what it is. Then you activate the beard force and the beard. Guess what the beard force is? Guess it's the force. You just say you want to do it. If you roll an unskilled action, you roll a 1d6, and you just determine what it is. On a 1, it's a failure, and 6 is a success. That's fucking it. It's a d6 system. Not a 2d6, even. It's a 1d6. You roll a 2d6 if you activate the beer force. You overload a skill. But you can't use it. 
and it's all about advancing the action clock. It's all about this. It becomes a very mechanically dull game. You are not doing something to advance something else. You're doing something to advance a clock. You are doing something to advance the little dial to go forward a little bit. Every single action inevitably results in you advancing a dial up a little bit. There's no reason to do anything else. You don't, like, okay, we gotta fix the trap. What do we do? Well, we're gonna just roll a skill, fix trap, advance the little clock up. I'm not a fan of clocks. Never have been, like, a huge fan of clocks. They worked in blades. But I don't like clocks very much because clocks encourage a very specific kind of play. And that very specific kind of play is, oh, look at the clock, everyone. Okay, everyone, look at the clock. It works for things like Blades in the Dark because it's all about having not enough time. We need to get out of the building. We need to do this. The alarm is getting raised. Something is always happening and you always have that clicking, that, that ticking clock at your back. Games like this suffer from having clocks. Because I don't feel like an action hero, I feel like I'm a fucking clockmaker who goes to turns the little clock. Some people love them, some people don't. I'm not a fan of them. Never have been a fan of them. Conditioning curbs and condi conditioning curbs conditions. Yeah, it's Ugh. This is what it is. Recovery. You're only recovering them times of scum to your police flaw. And you determine whatever the hell this is. That's it. You're gonna record a few attributes. And yeah, you can die because that's one of the only things you have fucking control of. It always baffles me anytime people bring up a death. And it. it I bring up death in like a health section. Be like, yeah, if you get reduced to zero HP, you die. Or hey, you get knocked unconscious. Oh, you get this. But it's like, oh, well, you know, does death exist in the Whiskerverse? Well, of course. And it's because you have so little mechanics that dying is the only thing you can do. That was like one of the big issues with uh, Interstitial. Teeth. That's one of the big issues with uh, Interstitial is the only real... One of the only things that you really had direct control over was the process of fucking dying. And then the game had to accommodate that. Being like, yeah, your ability is about dying. It's like, oh, God. Yeah, the great mustache dragon of Handal Bar. Ugh. This is actually kind of an interesting idea. It's not really used very well. It's the idea of motifs. Pretty much... Everything you do, important details about the world, that you can be used to do things with. About how they feel. It's about, like, oh, well, the, I feel kind of worried that the path is very precarious, or I feel this, or I feel that. The problem with motifs <laughs> is that you can summon them, and they're character-driven. Now, people are self-interested. People have always been self-interested. So the problem is, no one's going to want to directly summon negative. And if they do summon something negative, rest assured there's a reason for it. Alternatively, you have to ask really leading questions. Hey, why don't you feel comfortable being here? Well, I don't feel uncomfortable being here. I feel pretty good. And like, No, you have to answer the question. Why do you feel uncomfortable? That's a leading question. You don't do leading questions, because leading questions lead to people making choices. You are pretty much shoving them in a direction. And... Welcome to this. These are what your characters look like. They look like fucking reject goddamn adult animation cartoons from Newgrounds. Laugh. That, that is like the best thing I can kind of say with this game. Laugh. Are you laughing yet? Are you laughing at the fact that it's the funny haha, the funny haha beard jokes? Because that is literally all this game is. 
It is the funny haha beer jokes. And you get things like the stupid fucking memes. Like, oh, one inch anchor with loop on the top. Allows a character wearing it to commandeer any sh one ship by simply saying, I am the captain now. Why? It doesn't help anything. You, dude, there's no rules for even having a ship. You know, and... Beards, 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 what do you do? All the... The shaggy scenario and the this, it's... I hate this game. Well, actually, I don't hate it. I find it very boring. And you get some of these, like, here's the motif building questions. What favor did you do for Captain Greenbeard? How do you gain the trust? And it's like, whom, whom did you once fail to protect by the downy desperados? You have to ask leading questions. And you have to ask these things that people don't know sometimes, so they just make random assumptions. And it's like, oh, I'm not... <laughs> it's very tiring with these kind of games. Like, I always find these ones really like, oh, boy. And like, here's some of our... Here's some of our characters. It's like, yeah, here's the Brewmeister. Crew Barrel Theater. Look at him. He's funny. If you don't immediately laugh at this funny ha-ha, then it's not going to work. You aren't going to have fun. It's not going to, like, vibe with you. And that's one of the biggest issues with this game. You have to understand that this is not a real fucking game. Hardly. It's a thing about making a character to ha ha. Look everyone, it's the beard man. Because he's got a beard. Because beards are fucking funny. It's not though. This isn't a funny game. This isn't like a, a ha ha cool looking game. It's a very dull, simple game. The only reason it really kind of came on my radar is because of the name, which is partially the reason. Now, one thing about this that other... The, the other thing that kind of... Uh, the other part that kind of threw me for a fucking loop is, one, this costs ten fucking dollars, one. And this is also this... Founded in Follicles, the SRD. Content based in the Whiskerverse. This is $10. 10 10 And it's like, what? This is to 10 bucks? This isn't worth 10 bucks. I guess the artwork, in, if you like this, you count this for... No, guys. If this was a $2 game, I guess you could make a justification for it. If this was a $4 game, you can make a justification for it. But right now, this isn't a game, hardly. This is a fucking launch platform for their own fucking SRD document. It's like, what? Why? Original setting and D6 set. It's not original. There's nothing original setting. It's a... There's no setting. It's a bunch of jokes. Kind of hammered together and made into a shitty beard pun. That is all this fucking game is. Don't like that? You're not gonna like it. That's the sad part. I think that's kind of like the ultimate tragedy of the... Of the... Of the thing. It's like... Oh, $10 for the core game. For the core game and the map. What map? What map are you going to get for this? There's nothing there. It doesn't matter. And it's like... <clears throat> session, yeah, 120. You get four copies of the game. A session run by Tony. So that's Beards and Beyond. A game that I... I was originally not even going to bother doing it, but the fact that it was founded in Follicles, this fucking SRD was here, I'm less like, well then. I gotta look on it. Like, I have to look. 
And I did. And I was severely disappointed, as with most things. And my day is ruined. But we're gonna end off on one on one game. Not gonna be a happy end off, but I wanna kinda bring it up because I find it interesting. This is Academagia. It is exactly what you think it is. Kinda like how we started with Kunai Academy being literally just fucking Naruto. This is literally just Little Witch Academia. Get it? It's Acad Little Witch Academia. Uh Trevor Cashmere. Actually, let's do a let's do a look. Let's do a little bit of a Okay, the Magia. Good start, good start. We got a PC game, Academy Magia, TTRPG, RPG, back in 2014. This is a bit of an older one. No, this is still Academy Magia, this, this game. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I can't even find anything on this game. <laughs> so let's see. Catamagia. Uh, let's do Trevor Cashmere. Do you have anything for you there? Nope. Got fuck all for this guy. We know it exists. Like right here. You know, Trevor Cashmore. What else have you done? Is it just the Catamagia? And this Void Heart Symphony, Symphony, Symphony. You have actually interesting. What is Void Void Heart? What is Void Heart Symphony? Symphony. Shut the fuck up. Powered by the Apocalypse. No one cares. Standalone sequel to Rhapsody of Blood. Uh, Grand Bot Lines have disappeared, and Castle now spreads its insidious tendrils throughout their city. Huh. I guess that's interesting. Void Heart Symphony he worked on. But this was his... ...thing, and it's free. At least, God, I think it is. Actually, is this free? Can I actually, like, Catamagia TTRPG? <laughs> yeah. I don't actually think this is like an official game for anything. At least if it is, this is really bad. Yeah, this isn't an official game, it can't be. I refuse to believe that. But, yeah, by Cr Trevor Cashmore. <laughs> it was in my folder. That's kind of the thing, Beric. And... I have a lot of games in my folder. And sometimes I just don't really find any good place to put them. Like, Academagy is one of them. Unai Academy. Like, it's been sitting in my folder for about two months now. I just haven't been able to find a good place to put it. And it's like, fuck it, let's just do it all. all let's just do it all at once. Yokai Hunter Society, just because I thought it was going to be interesting. And uh, Mosaic Strict, which was me just wanting to kill myself. So, so yeah, this is Academagy. Now... I want you to both believe. Let's try to find the mechanics here real fast. All right, uh, guided by the administrator. All right, all right, all right. Enrollment. Okay, we got to choose a name. We got to choose our paths. Fill out their student comes. Our path. What they want to do. Okay, okay, okay. Extracurriculars. This is very important. Dungeoneering team captain. All right, all right. Classes. It's very important. We pick up our classes. You know, we can sign up for a major and our minor from among the six colleges. Okay, okay. We got our grades are important. We get 100 learning points, which effectively... Def How this works is that you effectively determine what rank you are. The higher you are, the better you do. The lower you are, the lower. You know, the, the not as good. You can get learning points relatively consistently. Okay, I'm going. 
Colleges and classes. Okay, it'll be here any second now. We're almost there. Super close. Right here. Two seconds. We'll get in there. We're getting there. All right, let's do it. We're, okay, there we go. Okay, this isn't it either. No, no, this isn't either. Okay. Life Academy Academagia. We are only a bit way halfway. We're, we're There's like 20 pages left. <laughs> Tests and easy actions. Yes, the, we get the actual core fucking mechanics of the game on page 53 of 72. This is what I mean by this game. Like, this game is an interesting idea. It is also really not great at layout. Or mechanics. <laughs> so... Test any dramatic and dramatic action that would be difficult for you. Dude sucking at some of the first stuff to being kind of good at something. Every student has some action they are obviously capable of easily doing. These are easy actions. The grade chart, call you know, anything below is an easy action. For past and extracurriculars, I the grade chart in the enrollment section to get an idea of what the grade is capable of doing for the category. It's only when a student attempts something drastic or truly out of their reach. <laughs> the mechanic is 2d6. This is where things get really weird in this game, and I don't actually much care for it because the idea is really bizarre, and I had to reread it like six fucking times. So, 2d6. The difference between your grade and, and the subject and the grade at which the action is attempting becomes effortless. The difficulty grade is the curve of the test, which determines how difficult it is to pass the test. For the purpose of the test, there are the fifth and final grade. The curve is the number you need to beat on both die to pass the test. If you grade an F and you're trying to do an action with difficulty grade A, you're going to need to roll a 5 on both dies. So, let's say we have a D and we want to, let's say we have an F and we want to do something with it that's B. So we have to do D, C, B. We have to roll three on both of our D6s. We succeed because they got a three and a five. That system, the system is whack. <laughs> Gonna be honest with you. System, kind of whack. Not a huge fan of it. Because what it is, is that it relies entirely on these. And you may be wondering, okay, these are defined things. They are not defined. I might have an F. Healing scratches and bruises. Is a nasty scratch. That, no. You have to determine everything based on where you are. And that means everyone kind of ends up in this weird amount. Where it's like, oh, hey, everyone, I have a this. And I need a this. And it's... The game is incredibly mechanically light, and it kind of suffers from that. But that may be the point. Some of these are incredibly, like, simple. Like Geomancy, for example. So, a small amount of dirt, stone means on pile, this word. The earth and stone cannot be levitated above the ground, small amount of size for a human head. Alright, pretty simple, but then it's like, well, you can shape a large amount of earth. Levitating the earth, shaping a decent amount of stone. What is a decent amount of stone? The game is about emulating a very specific genre, about emulating a very specific idea. And you, the game master, have to understand that. I actually thought this was a little bit more, because I, I looked through this and I'm like, alright, got a, we got... 30 pages, you know, we got 40, 40 fucking pages of stuff. Okay, there's going to be some, some good stuff here. Not really. There isn't. One of the big things is the idea of learning points. Now, we'll use that example of three, that I needed a three or higher on both of my dice. What would happen is, if I succeeded or failed at that, I would gain three learning points. Pretty simple. And I kind of like that. It's like, alright. It's odd, but it works. You know, they describe the result of their action. Fails the test. Describes their attempt. Action failed. 
the great failure card tests how, how the student fails equal to the curve. Yeah, if you fail, you get XP, which kind of works. I like the ideas of this set, of this game. I want to take it out with a fucking hacksaw and take out and add in the bits that I like. The problem is, is that it's really fucking thin. And I originally I was like, oh well, maybe I'll take out Beards and Beyond and put this one in to kind of have a nice theme. Uh, and then I realized there wasn't anything here. <laughs> This game is incredibly light. It's going to be about a three-minute, like a five-minute fucking section, just because the Cat Magic doesn't have anything. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have crunch. It doesn't really have a. Its setting is a setting. Yeah, like it or you don't. If if you're using this game, if you're you know, you look at me and you're like, all right, Notepad, it's time for a Cat Magia. We're probably going to be running a Little Witch Academia game. If we're going to be doing this, we're probably running a... You, know, you already have a setting in mind for this. We're running a Harry Potter game. Arguably, if you were to put a gun to my head... If you were to you know, slam that handgun straight to my fucking noggin and say, do, do you recommend this for a Harry Potter game? I would say yes. I would say yes, very much so. That this this was like one of the very few games that could pull off a Harry Potter game. Well, does it even do things like Little Witch Academia well though? Eh, it kind of depends. Do you like Little Witch Academia for the characters, or do you like Little Witch Academia for the magic? If you like it for the characters, I would actually recommend Golden Sky Stories for that. Uh, weirdly enough. It take a little bit of working, but you could probably make it work. It you know, it would be some time, but like you could definitely you know, adapt something to it. You would need something real light. If anything, Witch Quest could also work. Witch Quest Second Edition would work really well for it. Um, my little uh, my my Witch Academ my little Witch Academia. This game kind of works. Like if you force it, it can work and. The big thing, though, the big thing I want you all to... Mm. Delicious. The one thing I want you to remember about all of these games, more than anything, is that game design takes many forms. You're going to get crunchy games. You're going to get odd ducks, like Kunai Academy. And I like Kunai Academy. Very an odd one. That I started with, that one I like. I usually don't do games that I find a particular uh, joy out of reading when it comes to this, because you people don't want things that I enjoy because you hate me. But I like Kunai Academy because it had fun, fun mechanics. It had some good ideas. A little rough around the edges, but being rough around the edges means that. You can file those down. You can you can fix something that's rough. You can't fix something that's broken. It's a lot harder to. And uh, if you already see what we're doing here, oh lord, I don't want to. Lord, no, that don't fucking can't hurt you. And. Kunai Academy represented one very distinct idea. It represented that you can do a lot with a little. It's not a complicated game. It's really not. It's a stacking dice or dice ladder system. Roll two act two things together, try to score some hits. It's like, all right, it's a very simple game, but it also works very well. Kind of going into the, the game that we looked at after that, though, with the Yokai Hunter Society, the game was still tightly designed, but it kind of fell apart. As we were doing it, you know, here, let me, uh, so effectively Kunai Academy, you know, had, you know, good setting, rough mechanics equal good game. However, Yokai Hunter Society had meh setting 
solid mechanics. It was a solid game. I mean, it wasn't good. And it's a game I don't like. I actually, uh, yeah. And then you have things like Academagia. Academagia. A non, pretty much a non-setting. Doesn't really matter. Meh mechanics. Meh game. Beards and Beyond. Bless, you know, meh, bless setting. Non mechanics. Actually, it would be meh mechanics. Bad game. Now, the idea with any game design is. Do your duty as a designer, as someone who writes games, who wants to enjoy games. Look at what people do. Sometimes you have to remove yourself from the setting. The setting doesn't work sometimes. Sometimes you have to ignore this aspect. If you ignore the setting for all of these games, what happens? Well, it doesn't look like I should like any of them. Kunai, Kunai Academy had really rough mechanics. It wasn't really good in some aspects. There's some red flags. Yokai Hunter Society had really good mechanics, but I didn't like that one. Academagia has really mech game mechanics and mech games. And it has really and but bearded bar, bear, beard beard game had meh mechanics and meh game. And a bad game. The thing is. One thing you should always remember is that the mechanics have to work. Actually, uh, we want to do have to work with the setting to make it interesting. If they do not gel. If there is a problem with the mechanics or the setting and they're not gelling well, you get something bad. Hence one of the reasons, like, I didn't, I hate Beards and Beyond, because the game just doesn't really have a good set of mechanics behind it, and I'm not in the setting as much to care about it. But that's why I loved Kunai Academy. Mechanics were rough, but real rough. But because it integrated itself so well with its setting, and I understood what it was going for, I actually appreciated it more. And that's why I fucking hate Mosaic Strict with a burning fucking passion. Which it deserves a little more than the cross. So, hopefully, you can take away from this that game design isn't just about numbers, nor is it just about the isn't just about the mechanics, nor is it just about the setting. It's how you do with both of those that really makes something beautiful, and. I am the person who likes adding a lot more mechanics, who likes adding those things. Sometimes, if your setting cannot support your mechanics, it breaks. If your mechanics cannot support your setting, then those mechanics better be really damn good. Especially, but you also have to remember, if they're tied. If your setting sucks and it's just boring, one's gonna want to play it. So hopefully I can hopefully I can give that little bit of insight into things and just insight into my madness, which brings me to um our, our favorite our favorite time of the day our favorite oh god yep our uh, absolute favorite thing we love doing it's Kickstarter time everyone everyone let's clap yay fucking kill me please Kickstarter time is our favorite time so we actually okay. Uh, Vivi, holy shit, how much fucking money do you want? Venture's Guide to Theria, Volume 2, Taylor, holy fuck, you want 80,000? Jay-Z! What the fuck? Six continents full of gorgeous scenery for nearly a decade has been bringing listeners to excited. I've never heard of these guys. <laughs> I've never heard of these guys before. What? 
$80,000. That's a gish, right now. What the fuck? Who are the Dungeons and Randomness? I've never heard of these guys. We gotta, we gotta find it. Dungeons and Randomness podcast. What the fuck? <laughs> I've never heard of these guys. I've been posting weekly since 2012. They've got a Patreon. They've got they they, are, they got Patreon. They've been playing. They've been playing it. I know they. The worst part is I know they've been playing on the same fucking setting too, this entire time. Where's where's your Patreon? Tell me where's your Patreon? That's your red. That's literally your Reddit. T and D podcast. Wait. That's actually really clever. The DNR, yeah, DNR podcast, because that's what they are, they're going under. Like, yeah, D, D, N, D, you know, D, N, D, R. That's actually really clever what they're doing there. Like, <laughs> I think that, like, 600 fucking episodes, yeah, like, even around for a decade, well over 200 episodes of the show. Pretty intimidating. Or our first 200 episodes comprise arc one. Wait, each episode is normally two hours long. 400 fucking hours. 400 fucking hours, man. Holy shit, man. Arc, wait, they're on arc four, so it's, wait, it. Each arc is about 200. Yeah, no, that's that's adding up. That's a terrifying amount. That is a horrifying amount of content. Holy fuck. Jason Nace. What the fuck? <laughs> Let's see, has anyone pledged? What's the highest people have pledged? Five people have actually pledged two hundred fifty fucking dollars already. Jesus! Total war. We have what? Eight people backing five hundred dollars. Holy shit! Well, actually, it wouldn't even be five E. Would it? Five E came out. No, this wasn't five E. It can't be, because they've been going since 2012. What were they playing before? Because they weren't playing Dungeons and Randomness, because they've been playing since 2012. They've been playing since 2012. Mostly it was like basic set? Uh, What were you playing? I see you have hundreds of apps. Like, what were you playing first? Like, finally, here's the Patreon. Tell me, how much money do you make on Patreon? Five grand a month. That's actually a pretty decent... That's a, that's a chunk of money. What were you playing beforehand? Like, I'm a game ass. I'm an artist. Uh, locations people got... I don't... Read world, read world meta. No, that's not it. I'm now, now I'm dedicated. I need to find. I don't think episode guide. Group one, arc one.
Were they playing 4E? These motherfuckers were playing 4E. Yeah, they were they they were playing 4E or, uh, or 3.5. What the fuck? Yeah, no, these guys have been playing for a while. These guys are fucking grogs. Jesus. Which is also a weird thing to say, that you can call yourself a grog at this point. Money for artists and equipment. Yeah, they actually... Wait, they hosted a fucking Kickstarter for this back in the day? Mostly sober, live play, what we're trying to do with Kickstarter. What the... I'm fascinated. I am fascinated by you people. <laughs> yeah, it looks like. That's fascinating. This is legitimately fascinating. Well, like Dundurand setting book. Like, I mean, I gotta give them credit. They've been pumping along. It's the same shit. It's still 5e, and you're still going to like your 5e. 83,000? 85, 86? Jesus, mother of God, how much money do you fuckers expect to get? No, please tell me. Still people back for 1,500! Yeah, okay, I've done 40 for the first 200 episodes. It's like three groups of 20 people. Yeah, that it has to be that. But yeah, these guys are apparently big enough to at least, like, garner someone paying three fucking thousand dollars. Holy balls, that is three thousand dollars. Some one person has actually backed with this game. I was wondering why all the numbers look so weird. That's... I've never heard of these guys before. So I, I'm I'm fascinated. I'm so glad I clicked on this. Uh, speed up. Oh, I... Oh, I don't like that. Is that $1? Is that a $1? $100 goal? Vinegar! <laughs> It's Vinegar, everybody. It's our boy. <laughs> Kid Vinegar. God damn it. He's back, everybody. Uh, yeah. Hi, Vinegar. How you doing? Uh. Oh, wow. This is a. This is a game that definitely exists. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, wow. Venger's a fascinating creature. He He's not quite on Varg tier, but he definitely is wanting to be. I, I think that's the odd thing with him. Is like He wants to be the next Varg, but it's like, don't. SCP, board game, confidential crisis. Oh, Lord. I knew this was a good idea today. Oh no, Fantasy Apocalypse 1000 Open World Do Anything TTRPG. I I mean, I don't think anything will quite be as good as Timelines. Nothing can really surpass Timelines, the tabletop role-playing superhero RPG. But uh, these were the guys, I looked at these guys the other night. These are the crazy motherfuckers. I, I, gotta, I gotta respect these people for posting every single skill they have in the game. And this block text. <laughs> God, I love them. You don't need anything else, do you? Do we know what the, actually? Do we know what the game is? We know it's a. Uh, no, no clue. Hundred side. Okay. Hundred side D one hundred. Wow, I'm, I'm flummoxed. Or launching a site where you can access your copy of the book. <laughs> See, it's always one of these things being like, I look at this being like, can can I just launch my own Kickstarter real fast? Just like get all my shit set up? Oh, it's like, oh, well, you gotta be all fancy and stuff. Like, mm. Ooh, that's a pretty, pretty mini P foundation. That's what we like. 
this will make five. Yeah, this will make five gorillion dollars because people just want the minis. <laughs> MTF D class. MTF D class soldiers. Yeah. Okay. Bounty hunter. STL files, STL files, magical plants for magician. That is literally just a plant book. If you want the most British card game available, uh, this is a game literally about smashing helmets together. And you have to build these helmets, and then you you break them. That's literally that's that's the idea that you like battled la like you you're trying to like rip people's like head like hats off in this game. It's a cardboard war. It's very bizarre, and I'm like okay. I mean, I I. I give you I, I give you benefit for being unique. I do not give you benefit for wanting one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars for cardboard helmets. <laughs> ah, let's see. Uh, aesthetic role play role playing overtones. What the fuck is role playing overtones mean? I'm an artist with a literature degree, you poor bastard. Uh, <laughs> so, kill your companion. 5e, 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 everything is 5e. Oh, SLA Industries getting a second edition. This one I've been actually following. I find this one fat. fat I, I love JRPGs. Anytime I see them come out, I want to shell them a little bit. A narrative-driven, authentic anime role-playing game about violence, betrayal, and money. Inspired by Yakuza and Persona. Yakuza! I, I looked through it, and it looks... It, it's narrative-heavy, but... I do like the idea of... How the game looks and the way that it's kind of vibing with it. I'm liking the look... I'm liking the idea. It seems to have a very strong, we'll call it, very strong idea behind it. Now, Lion Wing, I actually looked at these guys. I'm like, who? I've seen them before. They published a lot of board games and, like, card games out of Japan. I, not really a lot of, like, RPGs. This is their first actual, like, authentic RPG they're publishing. So I'm really fascinated where it goes. Because all it is is about being a villain. Not being a being a bad person, just bad person things in the city of rogues. Uh, being bad people, I guess. I don't really know what the system is based off of, but it sounds like superior fiction. I'm kind of in. I like I needed embryo like I need to see how embryo machine handles. It's gonna be really popular among some of the STL guys. But okay, I'm I'm in. Now what else are we looking for? Uh, oh boy, SpaceX and five games. Look, everybody, it's Fabby! Clip, 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 clip. You needed 49 USD for this game. That's all you needed. Thank you, Mexico. Shine on. Let's see, backyard chickens, uh, stingers and spores. It's Savage Worlds. You can play bugs. That looks kind of, that look kind of fun, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty dull. I mean, my Mexican, my my boy, my, my Maria de, G de Jesus. He's he's going this crazy bastard, this crazy motherfucker. He's still going pump, you know, pumping out these sexy STL figures for us. Uh, we also have this. Which uh, I am, 
I am pleasantly surprised that this is done fucking terribly because it's a bad idea. It's a retelling of F. Scott Fitzgerald's Great Gatsby as presented by a 5e e compatible playable adventure. With anti with, through an anti-capitalist lens. My favorite. Brilliant Moon Publishing. Tell me. Tell me, Brilliant Moon. Oh, tell me. What have you been doing? Reward, soft cover, stretch goals. They're, they're, they're doing pretty. I saw this, I'm like... The shame is that it, the like the cover for it actually looks pretty good. Let's make a hack of Power Rangers role-playing game. Actually, thank you for reminding me of that. I'm gonna bring that out here. My curiosity has got the better of me. Welcome to the Essence 20 system. Actually, a role-playing system. Now, Essence 20... Is by a by the company of Row of Renegade Entertainment, I believe. Yeah, Renegade Games. And a few months ago, God, how long was it? It was about a, about a few months ago now, I think. They we their uh, news leaked. There's gonna be a Transformers Five E game. There's gonna be a Power Rangers Five E game. All these different Hasbro franchises, 5e, 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 and everyone was like, ah, fuck. It's going to be another 5e game, no one's going to really like them, it's not going to do too hot. Yet, this is what came out a few days ago. The Essence 20 role-playing system. Brand new game system by Renegade? By Renegade Game Studios which is a subsidiary of Hasbro, and they do a lot of stuff. Like, they have a lot of stuff. Like, host, like, technically having the 5e, the 5th edition core book for VTM. Like, it's like, wait, what? And the Power Rangers game, like, they have a bunch of, like, the Power Rangers, like, deck building game, the card storage, the, uh, where was it? They had, like, I think they had, like, an action figure one, like a promo. Yeah, Grid Rangers. Jigsaw puzzles. Roleplay, like... Whoa! Hello there! Oh, hello there! That's 300 fucking dollars. Glutton for punishment. $55 for the core book. Holy shit. I didn't see that one coming. Uh... But yeah, no, these guys do like all like the board game and card game design for all the Hasbro franchises, which I thought was actually really fascinating. But suddenly they are doing like, their own RPG, which if I was in Wizards of the Coast, I'd feel so fucking sad. You have no idea. It's actually adventure, uh, combat and exploration, and cr character creation tools, dice bag, 15 bucks, transformer role playing. Are all of these coming out at the same time? I think all of these are going to be coming out, like, roughly the same time. 13 plus? Okay. Autobots rule out. They also publish Overlight. No, that's not really their... Yeah, that was never really their big thing. They they don't really give a shit. Like, they have a few games under their... Scott Pilgrim? What? Like, they have a few games under their belt, but not, like, a lot. I've never heard... Wait, why is this... Like, I like... What is this for? Huh. Oni Games, Love Letter. Princess, Princess Ever After. I like... Love Letter's a good game. You should all play it. Huh. Game type. I want... Give me what I what I like. Give me role-playing games, baby. Alice... Yeah, they publish things like Alice is Missing, which won a bunch of awards. Now they're doing the G.I. Joe game. Now they're doing Icarus Storytelling. I need to find that one day. They... I don't think they did... Did they do Kids on Bikes? 
I think they did, yeah, they did do Kids on Bikes. I didn't think they did that. Ah, interesting. They have a lot of games. I guess you just never hear about them. I might do a Curious Case on some of these, just because they... I've heard about a few, and actually, you know what? That would actually let me justify going through Overlight. Yeah, okay. I think I'll, I think I'll add that as a Curious Case for Renegade games, just because I have a justification for going over Overlight, finally. Whoo! <laughs> I might hold off, yeah, I think I might hold off on doing this one until at least the Essence 20 comes out. If I can hold for the Essence 20, I could not do that. That'd be pretty cool. Give me that, give me that sweet, sweet dollar dues, figure steps. Pixel art, evil axes, like, yeah. These guys do a lot of stuff, and I find that really fascinating. That reminds me, um... Ah, uh, Hyperforce. That's what I. That's what that was. Yeah, Hyperforce. Yeah, no, that's. They didn't really do. I actually kind of like this. Actually, what system did they use? Hyper RG range from stand licensed materials such as Hyperforce. Yeah, because remember when Hyperforce was a thing? I remember when Hyperforce was a thing. That's pretty fascinating. Okay. All right. No, Pat, you're getting distracted. Okay, but yeah, I think that's really all we're going to do for that. Let's check out itch.io real fast. Uh, let's feel sad. Let's do new and popular, because we always go new and popular. We sail beyond! X-Map generator, all right. Reformish TTRPG. Oh no. Let's. Superhero RPG. Oh no. Care for Singapore? Oh no. Yeah, no the negative negative discounts I always like. Those are always my favorite. They're not. Don't don't do that. Yeah, not really seeing anything too exciting here. These nut issues. <laughs> yeah, Gallo Glass, let's see. Uh, 1E D&D. &D. Alright, all right. looks interesting, I guess. That's just in fucking Spanish. <laughs> we cannot have Space Jesus here, unfortunately. So, yep, yeah, that, 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 we'll, we'll call it there. I've been streaming for about two and a half hours now. Art house RPGs are the best, and I'm not going to feel too sad about looking at them. So, I hope you all enjoyed yourselves today. A little bit of a, a little bit as a, maybe not the most exciting of the curious cases, mostly because it was mostly just a game of getting rid of a few from my ass assortment. Uh, let's see, curious cases. What do we have on our curious case list right now that we can kind of begin to worry about? So, let's see. Kickstarter oddness. We don't really. Ha I don't have anything really there. Uh, let's see. We do have Tomb Punk. Where are some other ones? We can do the Curious Quest of Philly RPGs too, but FAP is most likely going to be put into the uh, what will uh, the Curious Case of Degeneracy. Which 
that's just going to be how it is. <laughs> I have what kind of is going to go in there, which is going to be... I'm debating on whether or not I want to do, like, Black Tokyo, because the only copy of Black Tokyo I can find is really fucked and not good. Not fun to look through. So that's just going to be, like, a... Not really... <laughs> hey. Faux RPGs are, uh... Furry RPGs, they're fascinating for a few things, just because the first one we did was Iron Claw and Furry Pirates, which both of which were like really overly detailed. And I want to do Albedo because Albedo is really fascinating. And that's why and we also Hicks on Hicks Vent Dracones is also really weird. But apparently there's like a second edition. There's like a second edition somewhere in that. Uh curious case the degeneracy is just weird. Like things that are just no pad no like. We're doing pretty good for Japanese TRPGs number three. I either need one more fear game or one more non-fear game. Because right now, like, these ones are here. These ones are here. I usually like having a minimum of three. So if you find any fear games that, like, really jump out at you, send them my way. You know where to find me. Franchise games, we can always do franchise games. Like, that's the big thing. We can always do franchise games, except you're going to get things like the Vodum's official RPG is fucking huge. And, like, Starship, like, if I were to do it, it'd be like, I want a little bit more of a grounding, you could say, for it. Like, a little bit more stuff to be actually tie things together. I think that would be a little bit better for that. Still hunting down for all of the satire and parody games, always am. Oh, excuse me. Art Punk RPGs is going to be hard because usually they're very short, so I'm going to need multiple of them to make things work properly. Forge in the Dark. A lot of them I already can, can find and find out where they are. Some of them are really tiny and some of them are really hard to fucking find. Actually, what we can do is Kunai Kuna Academy. So, the Shijon Wujan RPGs. I do have Wandering Wandering Heroes, Misrobed Gates. I want to do lesser known ones. That's why I'm trying to find like Weapons of the Gods, which is a really it's a bitch to fucking find, by the way. And there is a few other Wuja RPGs I want to do. Technically, if I really wanted to, I can do. Um, not Legend of the Five Fucking Rings. What is it? I I have it in my folder. I decided against it because I'm like I don't really need this. Uh, Legends of Wulin. Because Legend of Wulin's a little bit well known inside those circles, and I would want to be like, yeah, here's some odd things. If there's a request, I might do it. It's a weird system, but I'm kind of in it. But that's kind of the curious cases right now. It's a lot of. Finding out little things about them. I might do a curious case of getting like Renegade Studios. I need to look into there, see if I can find some more of their games. One of the things with uh, the Forge and the Dark ones is I wanted them to do odd ones, not well known Forge in the Dark games. Wicked Ones was on there, and then Wicked Ones wasn't on there. Like, yeah, it, that, that's one of those ones that like, I keep adding and then taking off. But I, I tried to look at ones that were odd and like just kind of out there or really different. I mean, like, this is apparently what they can do. I would say... If you were to kind of put a gun to my head, the next one would most likely be... Either... If I can find the mecha games, I would want to do the mecha RPGs because I have them. I know where they are. I know how to do them. It's just doing this, actually. And then you get some, like... Like Chrome Strike, for example. Chrome Strike can actually be put on, like, a TG Dusty Shelf pretty damn easily because it was a TG Dusty Shelf. So it's kind of like, where do you really go? It's 
the rape cave simulator. <laughs> bad Dandai, bad. Down, don't get me, don't let me get the spray bottle out. So, that is kind of how the curious cases are going. Now, that reminds me, uh, things Notepad Anon wants to do. Uh, we're, we're, since we're here, I may as well get this list list put up together. So, I need to. I, I had the. <laughs> this is going to be a, a classic Notepad moment. Um, I wrote up what games I could do, and then I pr proceeded to delete the document because I thought I didn't need it anymore. So, pretty much our mainline games that are currently on the shelf, effectively, of like what can possibly be done during the time before Media Week. Because what is going to occur after we get done with Waifu Core, the next game in the main line, after we get done with Waifu Core, we're going to immediately have... Actually, not immediately. I'm going to take a week off. Because I've been doing this for about a year now. Straight. Without breaks, really. So I'm going to take one week off. And I'm going to consume media just to fill out my repertoire of stuff I feel like doing. Because uh, I, I've been gradually running out of ideas. <laughs> like, very slowly, I've been kind of losing and kind of taking away ideas that have kind of... done its that they've run their course in a few of them that are like yeah i'm done with this i don't really need to do it anymore or hey this is over don't say that ever again Beric. <laughs> don't say that ever again but effectively it's just going to be me having to fill these things back up recently i actually have gotten a few patrons uh actually two patrons well, let me shill them real fast because i love them both and I've sent out the, like, hey, if you want to add stuff to games, if you tell me, and I'll do it. Now, for our mainline project, these are week weekday projects, effectively. What we currently kind of have set up is we can do Requiem for the Sidekick. Pretty much a game about exploding sidekicks and, corp and you know, corporate sh dishevelment. We can do Dark Corners and Old Tomes. Which, Dark Corners and Old Tomes have been kind of going back and forth on... How do I want to word this? It's been going back and forth on the nature of how it's been going. If that makes sense. On one hand, it has been Cult Simulator, the game. On the other hand, it's been Elder God Simulator, the game. So it's kind of that, like, what really is the best way of looking at things? I don't really know how I want to do it either. So I have a few ideas of how to do it. So I think that would be kind of a fun idea to explore. But like Striker Z, Striker Z kind of has to get on the, on the back burner until Flesh Mech Annihilator is done. Once Flesh Mech Annihilator is done... Things work. I can do Striker Z. But I need to make sure that this works. And so far, I'm feeling confident on it. I, there, there needs to be more on it, though. Uh, Action Squad Combat Evolved. I can technically do Aces. I should put Aces on here as well. So for our side... So, like, Weekend Warrior Projects, I really don't want to shift those over just because of their nature more than anything. Uh... Hence why we have Boat Sluts, Na Notepad's Naval Adventure. That was kind of a, an odd duck. I didn't think actually anyone would vote for it. Why did you guys vote for that? Why? I'm blaming you in particular, Danzai. You weren't supposed to vote for the boats. But you voted for the boats. So let's see. Uh, if I wanted to, I could put Sparkle Hearts on there. Uh, do we put Sparkle Hearts on there as, as our main line that could potentially? No, no, I don't think we're going to put Sparkle Hearts on there. I don't think that's really, I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think we can really put any of these games on there. 
License Madness, none of these really have anything jumping out at me. Don't worry, the, the, the perverts did, I know, don't worry. So, big think ideas. A lot of these don't really have any ideas. The only one that really has kind of like a rough basis is 100 Lotus Blades, because it's Icon. It's going to be me rewriting Icon from the ground up. But even then, that's not really that thick. So actually, we got three big games. We could probably throw in one more. Let's see. I actually was asking people about, like, hey, what do you want to see for, like, war games and stuff? Nobody knew what the fuck anyone wanted with the war games. No one knows what people want with war games, and it makes me feel sad. Ah. Mm. Uh, we actually do Achieving Heaven. I think we can do Achieving Heaven. Achieving Heaven's a little bit weird, but... <laughs> yes, Onichen Baro was, was, the, was that one. Uh, a friend recommended it to me. And I went down the rabbit hole with it, and I'm like, that looks so fucking stupid. I need it. I need it. Like, the Black Mohawk situation there, Varric, was... I went in there expecting one thing and got something completely fucking different. Like, Requiem for the Sidekick, I kind of have the idea for this one, because the, the idea for Requiem is you are not, not really playing sidekicks. The idea is that you are Silicon Valley, you know, Silicon Valley execs manipulating, you know, using sidekicks that explode. It would be the idea of me looking at me like, okay, good news, bad news. I can develop some new sidekicks, but uh, they're going to cost X amount. Like, I, I have the idea for it of you're constantly deploying these, these sidekicks that only last three, four times before they pop. Because human DNA isn't compatible with superhuman DNA. Like, Dark Cones and Old Tomes is Elder... Elder God fun Elder God viewpoint uh COC, you know, COC. Which half of me wanted to go comedic, other half of me didn't. That's gonna be kind of a thing that I need to talk with you guys. Aces Aces itself is not complicated, as I'm pretty much just gonna be using the tick combat system for it. But it's going to be me having to sit on my ass and watch about 90 hours of kill house footage. Because I need to actually do... Because the idea of tick combat is every second is counted. And since every second is counted, it becomes a lot more crunchy than it th than you think. I used it for caps. Uh, Black Shirts and Red Guards is... I'm just going to be literally rewriting uh, Sigmata. Uh, this signal kills fascists. Right. And uh, making it exactly... Making it almost one for one exactly what he doesn't want because I am a horrible human being with zero sense of soul. And Achieving Heaven, which is pretty much a uh, blood magic fight. Half of me wants to commit to style combat, the other half of me doesn't. It's effectively a Dead Man Wonderland. <laughs> That's what it is. It's Dead Man Wonderland. <laughs> Because I really like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, I should put on Odisan Demon Slayer Corporation, shouldn't I? Yeah, I'll put you on there. So, Odisan Demon Slayer. Yeah, it's 
Oh, just in Demon Slayer. Uh, ODSC has been actually in my head for a while now. Ever since I wrote uh, Sexy Man Posing Dramatically. And that's the system I would use for it. It would be... Pretty, it had the idea of leveling down in it. Because, like, you start off really overpowered, but just, like, you gradually just lowering your abilities. Because you are not a... You're an old bastard. You're an old man, and... Times are changing, and you aren't really adapting very well. So, that is how things are going. Actually, uh... Yeah. We'll put the, I'll put this up to democracy. Top three obviously will win. The other three will get regulated to the... The other two will get regulated to the sadness corner. Uh, let's see. Actually, do I want to... Is there any that I want to cut? Do we all want to just have a list of five? You know what? I'll leave it up to you two. Which one gets cut? Come on, you two. Make my day. We want five. Two won't make it. We'll, we'll let democracy be decided by you two. Have fun. Let's see. Um, is the boat slot thread doing well? The boat slot thread is doing exceedingly well in that. Oh, Jesus. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. Make you go away. Alright. Well, since there has been no decision randomly, I'm going to roll a d6. My arbitrary decision-making process will be the death of me. But do I care? Not really. Let's see. Who doesn't make the cat take? Who doesn't make the and a one and a two and a one two three? Action squad combat evolved. I'm sorry, but you didn't make it because of arbitrary decision making. I rolled a three. Cool. So here's gonna be our main five. Top three make it. Top the other three. Another two do not. Cool. I'm going to call it there for right now. Hope you all have one for us today. My name is Notepad Anon, and I'll catch you all on most likely tomorrow if I decide to stream and do, try to do some more Flesh Mech stuff. Because, yeah, we're still working on Flesh Mech Annihilator. Have fun!